Ali Abdal and so many others have it perfectly right. The Alfred app is basically essential on macOS. Spotlight is alright, but the things that Alfred can do are amazing. Things like dmenu on Linux, a command launcher, command prompts inside of applications that can run commands and do actions for you, is basically like Alfred but for your whole system and you can string together workflows with visual programming and what you can do with this is limitless because you can call command line scripts from any scripting language to do things for you with Alfred. So basically the sky's the limit. And one of my favorite things to do with Alfred and their workflows with Obsidian is being able to just quickly open up an Alfred window at any point, open up my commands for Obsidian and basically append to my daily note, my journal, the whatever notes I'm taking for that day, just straight from, from Alfred. I don't even need to be looking at Obsidian. I don't even need to have my note in edit mode. I can just start writing and there it is appended at the bottom, perfectly formatted. I think it's absolutely amazing. And it's really great for just getting stuff out of my head no matter what I'm looking at. I don't even have to be looking at Obsidian. It's just, it's just there for me. Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name is Brian Jinks and today we are talking about Obsidian Alfred app workflows. Originally, I made an Alfred app workflow for Obsidian just because I wanted to see what I could do, what I could set up, if it could help me with anything, you know, being more productive or just does it reduce friction from thoughts to notes to value added material. And I made a basic workflow and it had a couple steps, you know, I could open up my daily note, open up the graph, open up Obsidian, uh, basic, basic things. But I recently found in the forums, the Obsidian forums, a really well thought out and put together Obsidian workflow for Alfred that is awesome. I don't use all the features, but some of what I do use already have immensely added value to my daily note taking. So we're gonna go over all of these things today. What is Alfred, a little bit more about it, what the workflows do, what, I use them for and how I might have configured them a little bit and yeah so without further ado let's take a look at Alfred. So Alfred is an app for Mac. It does have a free version but a lot of the best features like uh, text expansion and workflows and a lot of the more advanced features are a paid feature. You can buy this uh, application once and not, this is not for everyone, not everyone's gonna to wanna to pay for an application like this, but if I was going to buy a single application for Mac, uh, this is it. In fact, I've only bought, I think, two applications for this computer. One of them, I shouldn't have even done it, it was like a tiling window manager or something that replicates that behavior, and there's a better one that was for free anyways. So this is basically the only app I would be willing to pay for thus far on Mac, and it immensely changed a lot of my the way I do work and my workflow. I did use dmenu when I was on Linux and that is amazing as well, but just these command launchers are essential for basically being super productive. So, I use Alfred a lot extensively. I use a lot of the different features and we're going to take a look at what I use and how I use it and how I use it in Obsidian. So, like I said, Alfred app is a paid application that you can get for Mac. Now, what you need to get is the power pack and that is what you actually will get all of the really awesome functionality for. And I just paid for you know the smaller one. Um, I didn't need all of that. And where it really comes in handy is a lot of these workflows and text expansion. Um, there are things that can integrate with all of your other applications, uh, commonly used things. Like I could open up Alfred and say, hey, dot search for Stack Overflow for Python, and I wanna look for list comprehension and it'll open up, is there anything for something? Um, maybe not the most accurate thing, but in some cases it actually has worked when I'm not like in the middle of filming something. But searching Stack Overflow, GitHub, I could say, hey, open up GitHub and let's look at my repos. I could say, hey, open up my repo for my CV. There, super simple command launcher. And hey, even, even this one, raindrop. Search my raindrop for Python. And then when it searches through all things that have Python, I want to say, okay, Python projects, let's look for Discord. And it should find, yeah, how to make a simple Discord bot in Python. And 
that's just like my looking through my raindrop bookmarks. The amount of things that there are Alfred apps for is insane. What you can do with them is even more insane. Uh, I've seen some really crazy stuff come out of the work people are doing with this. And it's interesting in a respect because a lot of what people are doing is visual programming. So visual programming would be like, these are pieces of quote unquote code, or these are actions, steps, but they're like visual elements you can move around and play with. And where the real power of these workflows come from is not necessarily the fact that it's visual programming like this, but that you can actually use these to call certain scripts like bash scripts or Python, whatever, and extend the functionality of whatever you're interacting with. So really the sky is the limit because you can piece together a lot of scripts and visual elements together to achieve some really dramatic and pretty crazy results. And a lot of these workflows come pre-built. You can just download them from other people to install them. All you need to do is just double click on the workflow file once you download it and it's in Alfred and you're good. Now with uh, the Alfred workflows, I did make one for Obsidian um, a little while ago and it was just a basic thing that got some of the work done for me. And I didn't use it too extensively. I just put it up here. It wasn't really paying attention to it too much and nobody really, it didn't look like anybody really cared about it. But um, it did some basic actions like open up the graph, open up your daily note, um, open up a new note. So you could just create a brand new note from Alfred and it would just open up in Obsidian. And you can do some things like that. And it wasn't super complicated. I wasn't really into figuring out how all the visual programming stuff worked. So um, that's about the extent, the extent I got with it. Now where the really awesome thing comes in is that somebody spent a few months really hammering out a lot of the details and found an amazing way to structure their Obsidian uh, Alfred app workflow to have multiple amazing features such as opening your entire vault in VS Code, searching through all of your notes, appending to your daily notes, which I make prolific use of, um, dealing with task management with a task management file, dealing with block references, and a couple other things. Like I, I don't use all of them, and I've configured it a little bit for like formatting and some of the functionality that I care for, but this was an amazing application. And you can grab it from this, uh, forum post right here, and I will put a link to that in the pinned comment uh, with around this timestamp area. Great. It's an absolutely amazing workflow, and I highly recommend you check it out if you have Alfred and want to want to try this out. I make prolific use of it. Now, of this, of this new Alfred app Obsidian workflow that I take advantage of, now this doesn't mean like it's re is replacing anything that I've done in my prior workflow videos. This is just something additional that I've added in, and Likely in the new year, I'll be making an updated video of where I'm currently at with all the processes and tools that I've worked into this web of uh, content creation in Obsidian. And what I mainly make use of is five things that are offered by this workflow. Um, the two options for appending to your daily note, opening your entire vault in VS Code, there's searching through your entire vault for specific notes based on title, and then the last one is dealing with block references and creating and simultaneously copying the link to them. And we're gonna take a look at all of them today. Quick side note, if you like a lot of the stuff that I talk about around Obsidian or you want my CSS, my, my custom CSS file and templates and any of the documents that I show, use and produce, um, that type of stuff, or you just wanna keep in touch and see what I'm doing and he maybe hear about any future courses I might be making, I do have a newsletter that I'm working on. It is in the pinned comment below if, or the video description. Either way, uh, if you want to join the newsletter and see what's what or uh, have a direct line of communication with me besides my Discord server, you can sign up at that below. All right, back to the workflow. So I'm in my daily note for tonight. Uh, it is, or today, this is uh, November the 24th, so this is my daily note. I have didn't really put too much at the bottom yet or I just kind of moved it out because that's private. And I'm gonna add some new stuff in here. So what I've started to do is I like to write in my daily note constantly throughout the day and leave timestamps so I know when I wrote what. And I have some templates for this. I have my template for, I'll just say now, yeah, if I could type now, and that inserts an ISO date stamp, you know, your month, day, hour, minute. And that's great. And it highlights, and when I render it, you know, there it is, and it's great. Now, what I really like is that I was able to configure this application to use my way of doing timestamps and do this. So I could open up Alfred, 
and J, I like to think of as, you know, like a journal. Yeah, it is a journal entry, journal entry. And I just do space and now I can start typing whatever I want to say. And I can say, this is a journal entry from the Alfred workflow. And I could say, okay, that's good, enter. And now it is appended to the bottom of my daily note, my, my file. It doesn't, I don't even have to be on this, this uh, screen. So I could be like over here looking at something, you know, looking at the actual Alfred workflow, open it up and say, hey, journal, we are not looking at the note. It'll take you to it, focus on the app, but it's already inserted in there. And one thing I also really like about this is that I could be in preview mode I don't even need to be in edit mode for this. And I could say, hey, we are going to add a new note in preview. And it works just the same because all it's doing is adding content to the actual file that is being displayed here. So it doesn't need to even need to have Obsidian in edit mode to do this. But now I wanna add another note to this specific timestamp and I don't wanna to have to have another one because I already have three. So let's just do N for add to a daily note, or in my case, I just think of this as a plain note, no timestamp. This is an addition I almost forgot. Right there, appended to the bottom. And I did have to do some uh, configuring to make sure that there wasn't like double line breaks and that this was displaying the way I want. And honestly, all I really had to do was look around at some of these pieces in here and figure out which things were changing what formats. And yeah, this is like where I changed the formatting of the inputted um, ISO date. So these are two of the things that I use the most, which is basically adding new content to my daily note from wherever I am. And I don't have to have Obsidian in as my focused application. I don't have to have it in preview or in edit mode. And I can just easily type out a large amount of text and it's just inputted for me. And it's, this is something I actually really like because also when I'm doing a journal entry and just typing away in here, I could just, you know, keep on typing and typing and typing and typing and typing and whatever content I want to add in here. And I don't have to worry about anything. Like I don't have to worry about it being too, too much or whatever. And then let's just say I'm paranoid. I'm paranoid that it's just going to crash. Buffers are going to overflow. The world's going to end. And I want to just get that into Alfred or into Obsidian. Hit enter. There it is. But then I wanted to continue that thought, you know, just do the, the other one without the timestamp. Great, I can easily add new content to my daily note. And this is probably something I make constant use of throughout my day. Another really interesting thing that you can do is I can open up my vault and search through it. So I can say, hey, search. And I'm gonna search my notes for, let's just say Obsidian. And you'll get a bunch of things that are about Obsidian in here. Then, and it does that look through the titles and it's look, it looks like it also does look through um, content because some of these things are not titled Obsidian. I honestly don't use too much of this because I think the search feature in Obsidian is amazing. But if you want to quickly open up a Obsidian note on the fly when you're not even focused on the application, just really quickly, like um, I'm over looking at my browser and I want to say, hey, um, let's just open up a note saying, mm, what was that note I had on uh, Zettel Costin and, mm, I don't see a Zettel Costin note in here, but I know Space Repetition is sort of similar. I can go there, and then there's Space Repetition. There's Zettel Costin, and I'm, I'm, off, I'm off to the races. It's easy to see where I want to go, what I want to do, and I can just quickly open that from anywhere. Another really useful feature that a lot of these new community plugins have been trying to add that this workflow actually does pretty well is a way of integrating with block references and working with them. So let's just say I have this uh, line item here, Evergreen Notes. What I want to do is I want to say, I have this bound to control B, but like for control block, I'm gonna do control B and now it adds a block reference. But what it also does, if I go back to my, that daily note I was working on and go to the bottom, I can now control or command paste. And now it actually links directly to that note and that block reference. If I embed that block reference, transclude it. Now we can see that's where it is. And I can actually see that this is linking directly to Evergreen Notes where it was at the bottom. Awesome, so it not only creates that new block hash, but copies the name of the note and that block hash so I can already just paste the reference somewhere. There are, are some community applications uh, slash plugins that do sort of similar behavior that I will probably be covering in the future, but for a quick, easy hotkey to grab a block and paste it where you want, really awesome. And the last really cool thing that this um, plugin or this uh, workflow does for me that I actually might use uh, is 
opening up your entire vault in VS Code. So if I open up V, and I can just say, hey, open up my whole vault in VS Code, and it will open up an instance of VS Code with my whole vault in there. So if you're using things like, um, let's just say Dendron or Foam or some other system that uses VS Code, and you, you, know, you could also use that if you have, you have your vault on GitHub, you follow my GitHub workflow or use the GitHub Obsidian plugin. If you have your vault on GitHub, you could use uh, code spaces or you could just use VS Code. A lot of people are using uh, search and replace in VS Code to quickly refactor things like um, tags or links or something. And I just use the command line, but you, this is a really great tool to take advantage of. And if you just want you know, your vault in VS Code for whatever reason, it's a great way to do that. The other two pieces of this workflow, one of them I don't really, actually there's two more that I don't really use and then this other little feature um, for if you're searching through your vault, but you don't find a file, it'll open up that search in Google. So I could say, hey, um, bad example here, but like testing, searching, couldn't find a note. So it's already like defaulting to, okay, let's search Google for whatever that is. Um, that might be useful. Um, I just have it there. It, I never had to use it. But um, the other two pieces of this workflow that I don't make use of, but you might want to, is a way of doing task management where it appends tasks to a task file and does some, um, there's some notes here about how it like appends them and does something where it links blocks of your tasks to your daily note, um, things like that. I honestly, I don't do task management in Obsidian, like my daily task management at all in Obsidian. So maybe others might find that useful, maybe not. Um, there's also clip here, which basically is uh, using Safari. Um, I don't use Safari, so I don't really make any use of that, but it would be taking a web page, converting it to Markdown, and then allowing you to put that into your your vault. So it's like it runs, looks like, looks like HTML to text, and you can just paste a web page into your vault as Markdown. Um, not really into copy and pasting whole web pages into my vault. I, you know, you filter the content, you curate it, you, uh, refine it, and then you add it to your vault as you mature. So hopefully you found this interesting, maybe helpful. Uh, I really like using Alfred. I use it extensively all the time for more than just Obsidian, but this, this workflow is amazing. And I love using, especially the daily note appending feature. Love it. Uh, if you ever use this, let me know what you think. Let me know what you like about it. Uh, I want to know what your thoughts are. I really think the developer worked really hard on this and did a great job. And if you think so, let them know in the forums. Now, a quick note before we go, I want to thank all the patrons who support this channel. Devin, Ed, Hyungjung, I'm probably butchering that. Leonardo, Brandon, Klaus, Paul, John, Joel, John, and Alberto. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Everything that you guys do, I appreciate. And everybody who donates on Buy Me A Coffee, PayPal, or any other way of supporting this channel, thank you very much. It is highly appreciated. And if you guys ever want to hang out on my Discord channel, link to that is in the description below, and I will catch you all in the next one.